Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be taking a step back in time actually. I'm going to be telling you about a tried and true proven method to catch and large mull away in river systems. This only works in rivers so okay so this is not for you offshore guys this is for the rivers only and it is usually well, when I used to do it as a kid and uncles and grandfathers and stuff used to do it this is a good way to find big mull away um, anywhere from 30 plus 30 plus pounds upwards it's not um, casting lures for schoolies okay this is a oh, very old school method for big mull away in rivers okay um, so we can just get into it I grew up down in Victoria in a place called Ocean Grove Bowen Heads and I used to fish the Bowen River and I was taught a technique as a very young guy on how to catch large mulloway and that's where my mulloway journey began. As a lot of you know, I've caught a lot of them over the years all around the country. But that's where it started. And this technique's one of the best ones. You do need a boat for it, unfortunately, this is for rivers, and you do need a small boat. And make sure it's a small one, okay? Um, but before I get with the method, we'll go back to the old school gear as well we used to use. You don't need big heavy gear for jewies when you're doing this. Um, and most of the time, as you know, jewies will go with the current. So you just got to wear them out, take a little bit of time to wear them out. They're not really dirty fighters. They're not going to break you off around pylons and piers and everything else. They're just going to run with the current. Okay? So, saying that, we used, I grew up using 10 kilo. I was brought up to use 10 kilo mono. Back then, there was mono. There was no braid. So I use a mono to catch these fish. Okay, now we'll go back to old school. The first thing I'm going to do is show you old school. So there's a TLD 15. Back when I was doing it, we used to use the TLDs, but I used to use like Ambassador 7000s, 10000s as well. No spin reels, okay? So that's one. One reel, and that's just like, like on, sorry, on a little short stroker. This is like a seal star. It's one of the cheapest rods I own. Still one of the best rods. It's a short stroker. But it's only a 10 kilo stick, it's nice and light in the tip. And this thing used to knock over jewies quickly and easily. And when I'm down off the gold, when I was at the Gold Coast, I was using this chasing cobia and jewies, knock them over easily. This is only 10 kilo mono, okay? TLD 15 on a short stroker, 10 kilo short stroker, so nice and light. The other one we used to use, and this is an oldie and a goodie, the old Speedmaster, the old original Speedmasters. And this one, I've had this one since I was a kid, still going strong. Same deal, 10 kilo mono on a 10 kilo short stroker rod. Doesn't have to have rollers on the tip, just normal guys is fine, okay? So these are the outfits. Okay, just very basic outfits. Even like nowadays you get nice um, spin reels with good drags on them, they'll be fine. They're only jewies, they don't really go that hard. They mainly use their weight against you, okay, in the current. But with this method, what I'm gonna explain, it's not too bad, you can actually chase them down. So 10 kilo is more than enough. You don't need to go fishing with 80 pound, 100 pound guys. A lot of you guys fish way too heavy. You really do. 10 kilo is enough. If you don't trust 10, go to 15 kilo, max. Don't go any heavier. You won't need it. You really won't. And the amount of eagle rays and big black sting rays we've stopped on this type of gear. They take time, but you get them. Um, bronze whalers are in the river, in the rivers, especially down there. You get them on this gear. It takes time, but you do get them. Don't worry, 10 kilos, as long as you drag up properly, 10 kilo is good. Okay, the next bit, the two rigs. When you're doing this method, you're gonna want two rods. Okay, and I'm gonna show you the two rigs. One rig is basically, it's just getting back to basics. Okay. So the first rig on the first rod is back to a running sinker. So you got your running sinker here, you got your swivel there. That's once again, 10 kilo. But this is 80 pound tray, so you used to use 80 pound trays, because Julie's got you know, little, little teeth. Um, and sharp gill rakers, which can break you off if they get the hooks down. So I use 80 pound. Back when I was doing this, I was probably using 50 pound or something, because it's quite thick back then. But now I use 80 if I'm chasing jewels, because it's quite thin, still strong. So we've got sinker, running sinker, swivel, about a metre of litre to snelled hooks, okay? Rig number one, and very, very simple. Back to basics. There's nothing hard about this. The hardest part about this is the technique I'll tell you about. When we get to that stage, the technique's a bit you really got to concentrate on for this to work. Okay, so the first one's that. The second one, on the old TLD 15. Okay, just a hook. That's it. 
80 pound tray, so I've got about 3 metres on here and then it's just joined to the mono. It's about 3 metres and just a hook. And this one's a bigger hook, this one's a 10 -0. On this one, I usually run about 6 O's to 8 O's. Match it to the size of your bait if you use a mullet or salmon bait, yay or yay or whatever. Match your hooks to the size of the bait. But on this one, I usually run just a single hook, not snelled. I always run snelled on my, sink, on my sinker one. But on this one, unweighted, just the one hook. And it's usually a bigger, it's like a 10 O or something, usually. Okay. What we're going to want to do with these is your live bait. Once again, mullet or salmon, especially down south, you catch both. Jewies love mullet and they love salmon, they even like small silver trevally. <coughs> but with trevally they'll dart around everywhere. So get a pair of scissors <coughs> with the trevally and just chop their tail like you've got the two, two forks of the tail, just chop them in half. And that way the trevally will be down in the water, <coughs> they'll kick and vibrate but they won't swim all over the ocean. <coughs> or in this case the river. <coughs> okay, but I used to really like salmon, something about salmon, Jewies love salmon. And oh, like I said mullet trevally but salmon seem to be best and they last for a freaking hour. Hours. So if you get a nice Aussie salmon, put him on here live. With this one, once again, you're in a boat, remember? So you'll know the depth of your river. This is the river wherever you're living or you've tried to catch jewies. You have an, you'll have an idea what stretch of the river you want to be in, where the jewies are, at your local waterways. And you'll have an idea of the depth. With the one of the sinker, you want to drop about three quarter way down to the bottom. You down on the bottom, you want about three quarter way down, okay? So somewhere between half and the bottom. And that's where you want this. Once it's um, down to your desired depth, put the reel in gear with just enough drag on it so the live bait doesn't swim around. But if a jewy picks it up, he can actually run with it. Okay? So that's what you want to that. And that's the first one. That's straight down under the boat. It's going to be straight down. Okay? About three quarters of the way down. And you drag just enough drag so the jewy can swim off with it, but your live bait can't. With your next one, the single hook one. This one, you want to pierce this one through the nose, okay, through the nose of the bait fish. Just through the nose, that's it. And then flick him out. And just let him free swim, just let him flick out and let a heap of line go. And then him well and truly away from the boat and away from the noise, or just or just away, okay. <clears throat> and surprisingly, this one goes quite often. This is probably the main one it goes. This one does, but this one goes a lot. And also catches a lot more sharks. But, and good jewies. Just let that one go, and same deal. Just put it in a rod holder and enough drag pressure so the live bait can't pull the drag out, but a jewy, if it picks it up, can. Next thing I want you to do before we get to the technique is if one of these rods go off while you're doing this technique, if one goes off, pick it up very quickly and free spool it. Okay? Just free spool it. Let the jewy, you know, mouth it, roll it around, and get the hooks down. And then just put it in the gear. Don't strike straight away. Then after a you see, if you're still there, your mouth, and you, you know it's time. You just you know when you got when it's time. It doesn't always work, but a lot of the time, just put the gear, the reel in the gear. Don't strike straight away. Wait till the rod starts loading up. When the rod starts loading up, then strike, <coughs> and you're on. Hopefully, <coughs> eighty percent of the time. Okay, and once again, um, with your live baits, you're going to have to probably go out the the day before and catch live baits and keep them live in a bait tank or in a basket or somewhere or if your boat's in the water I don't know if you can catch a live is at night time catch them at night time if you can get them on bait jigs or under lights or something I know you can't use cast nets and stuff down south so but what, you'll know all this this is your waterways your area I'm just telling you the technique to use okay so so far we've got the outfits we've got the rigs and your live baits and live baits seem to work best for this method guys Fresh baits, I've never really tried. Um, I'm sure they would work, but you'll probably get a lot more pickers and crap. Live baits seem to work best. Now, we'll get into, we'll get into the technique. First of all, like I said, this should be your river. You'll have an idea what section of the river the mother way usually get caught in and are usually traveling in. What part of the river, okay? Some of these rivers are quite long, go for miles. And you might get jewies all the way through them. I don't know. Um, Second of all, you want to pick around a full moon to a rising moon and you want to get a low tide because with this method and I've fished all over the country, jewies tend to like low water running in no matter where you are. It seems to be just one of their favourite tides, it really does. I have caught them at high tide and running out tide and this and that but for this method to work well and it seems to be proven low tide running in and you want it on a new moon 
and you want it somewhere between say midnight and three o'clock in the morning. When you do this method, I want you to be you want to be on the water when there's really no one around, there's no noise, boat traffic, idiots, and you just want you just want to be nice and peaceful and quiet. You're not chasing schoolies here or the plastics in the middle of the day. We're going after big fish in a river, and you need to be quiet. Okay. Now, like I said, the smaller fish are going to be 30 pounds up up to the big ones, 60, 70, 80 pounds. You just you want to be quiet. Okay. Uh, next method, as in saying that. If you've got a mate you like to take fishing but he bangs around in the tinny or the glass boat and drops sinkers and makes noise and doesn't shut up, don't take him. Not doing this. Not being rude or nasty, just don't take him. You want to be quiet, you want to be sitting down in the coffee, sipping, sitting, you want to be sitting down in the chair, sipping coffee, keeping, trying to keep warm, being very quiet as you're going along, okay? This method really is, you need to be quiet. I just can't say that enough. It's, you've got to be quiet, sitting down, being, just being very quiet. Okay, now the method. When I was doing this as a kid, we used to use rowboats. Okay, we used to uh, row up to say the Bowen River. Yes, but I'll go back to the Bowen River. That's the example. We used to go set up to the to the bridge there. Didn't go out to the mouth because that gets quite quite dangerous. The last run out tide and run out you know on a rowboat. You don't want to do that. So we used to go to the bridge, and then sit at the bridge with our live baits and our two rods early in the morning. Freezing our butts off, okay, waiting for the tide to change. Once the tide changes, you want to be sitting in the channel. You want to know your river. You want to know where the channel is. You want to be sitting in the channel. Once the tide changes and starts running in, okay, you want to put your bait down three with a sinker, three quarters of the way down, so it's off the bottom. It's not going to get snagged. And the other one out is free swimming. Now what you're going to do is just drift along the river. Now, this is it. Just drift with the current, okay? The only reason we use oars if there's a little bit of a breeze or something around pushing you out of the channel, you just want to use your oars to go back into the channel. And all you want to do is drift the river, the section of the river, you want to fish for jewies, but you want to stay in the channel, okay? You're not looking for bait, you're not looking for structure, you just got this, this gear down, you're drifting with the current, middle of the night, nice and peaceful and quiet, okay? And just drift along with the current, that's all you want to do. And this method works extremely well for big fish. Just drift, uh, like from the bridge, we used to drift all the way out to a place called Sheepwash. And it's K's and it took hours. It would take hours. And we used to use the oars just to keep us in the channel. Okay? We used to know the river like the back of our hands, so we didn't need GPS's and stuff. We knew where we were. You could see the bank, we knew where the channel was. Which you probably will too, in your own rivers, in your backyard. Um, but I'm going to say, nowadays, we've got electric engines. I've never done it with electric, but I'm sure they would work. Same deal. Instead of using your oars, use your electric engine. Just use your electric, not to go up current or anything. You just want to get drift with the current, whatever the pace of current, that's the pace you're doing. But you just want to use your electric just to go back into the channel, okay? Just to keep you in the channel. For some reason, you need to be, you need to be in the channel. And you don't need your sound run pinging away, making a hell of a racket. You don't want it, like I said, you've got to be quiet. It has to be really quiet for this. So you want the rods in the water, you want to be sitting in your seat, sipping coffee, trying to keep warm as you're drifting down a river in the middle of the night, freezing your butt off. That's it. And the longer the drift, if you can take hours, the better. Because somewhere along there, you will hook something big. I won't guarantee it's a dewy in your first or second go. It does take a few goes. That is dewy fishing down south, and you are chasing big fish. But you will hook stingrays, you will hook sharks, okay? But just... If you keep trying this method, somewhere in there, you're going to hook a 50 pound mile away, 60 pound mile away. It will happen. Okay? And like I said, mile away aren't dirty fighters, and you hook it on 10 kilo, this light gear, they go off the current. You're on a small boat, drifting. You'll wear them out pretty quickly. Um, just idle after them. Okay? Um, that's it. That's the secret. <laughs> I know it doesn't sound like much, but I looked over YouTube and I've talked to a heap of people. No one knows this. No one even does this now. And I've kept it on my hat for years and people have known me. I've, I've caught a lot of jewfish over the years, a lot of jewies. And this is one of the main methods when I was a kid. Okay. Um, and it's a lost art form. Some of the older guys are going to remember this or the grandfathers or the dads speaking about this method because it is, it's a lost art form. But I bet you it still works today. Especially today, with so many boats and people out fishing and so much noise around, you want to go early in the morning, take your little wooden boat out, some oars, or take your tinny out with the electric engine on it, 
but be very, very quiet. No drop and sinkers, no banging around, no heavy stepping. You've got to be quiet, guys. That's, I can't say that enough. You've just got to sit down and be very, very patient. And just drift through the current, just use your electric or the oars, whatever what method, to stay in the channel. And I think I said it before, but I'm going to say it again. Turn your sounders off. You don't need them for this. You're not looking for structure. You're not looking for bait. You're just drifting. And if you know your river, you don't need any electronics on at all. You, probably, you need your lights so no one's going to run into you, or, you know, just, just in case. Have your nav lights on while you're drifting so you're not at anchor. But that's the only electronics you want on. And if you don't really know the river too well and you want to keep an eye on the channel, have your GPS on, but have your GPS on full screen. Don't have the sounder. You don't need the sounder. You're not looking, like, once again, you're not looking for bait. You're not looking for structure. You're just drifting in the channels with two rods out. Just sitting there quietly, you know, having a cigarette, drinking a coffee, looking at the stars, enjoying the night until the rod starts screaming. It's very, it's a nice, easy way to fish. It's peaceful. Um, and if you do it enough and get, and if you know the river well enough and you know where you want to be, and you do a few, do this a few times and really get to know the method and zero in on the method, you're going to catch some really big jewies. That I'll promise you. None of this schoolies and little plastics and showing off on Facebook. I mean proper big Jew. And well, once again, it does work. It's a proven method. It's been around for a long time. It's a lost method. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, yeah, give me a like and a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And I'll see you again in the next video. See you soon, guys.